Gather around the fire, friends, and let me tell you about the Yakuza, Japan's version of the Mafia and how they work. These guys aren't just your average gangsters. They're a whole different breed of criminal that have left their fingerprints all over Japanese society. The Yakuza isn't a single organization. It's a collection of separate gangs or clans, kind of like the families in the American Mafia. But these Japanese gangsters have their claws sunk deep into all aspects of Japanese life. From the seedy gambling and prostitution dens to the hollowed halls of political and financial power. Now, the Yakuza like to spin their own tales about their origins. Some say they descended from honorable samurai warriors called Ronin, who protected their villages from bandits after becoming masterless during the political upheaval in the 1600s. Others claim they came from a group of wildly dressed hooligans called the Kaboki Mano, who terrorized civilians with their long swords and crazy antics. The truth? Probably a mix of both. Masterless samurai warriors looking for purpose and unruly lower-class misfits who found their way into the criminal underworld as Japan transitioned to a market economy. These were the ultimate outsiders, rejected by mainstream society. What really sets the Yakuza apart is their name. It comes from a Japanese card game called Oicho Kabu, where the worst possible hand is called Yakuza, meaning worthless or pointless. Now, the Yakuza have a strict hierarchy, a single patriarch called the Komicho at the top. Under him, you've got lieutenants, underbosses, and a whole bunch of minor gang leaders and street thugs that do the dirty work. The structure looks simple on paper, but it gets complicated fast with regional leaders, advisors, and other positions of authority sprinkled throughout. But the real glue that holds these clans together is the oyaban koban relationship a father-son bond of absolute loyalty and obedience. The Koban, or son, pledges his unwavering allegiance to the Oyaban, the father figure, in exchange for protection, prestige, and mentorship. It's like a twisted version of a mobster fraternity. This bond is sealed by an elaborate ceremony involving shared glasses of sake. The new inductee merely sips while the boss drinks his fill, solidifying the hierarchy. Fail to live up to your duties as a Coban? Well, let's just say the punishments for disloyalty range from the humiliating to the downright gruesome. We'll get to that grisly tradition shortly. So, what do these Yakuza thugs get up to anyway? Well, you name it, they're into it. Any criminal racket that can line their pockets, illegal gambling, prostitution, drug smuggling, firearms trafficking, protections rackets where they extort local businesses, the works. These guys are like criminal multitaskers, keeping all sorts of shady operations running smoothly across Japan. Need someone roughed up for not paying their debt? The Yakuza's your crew. Itching to indulge in some underground thrills like underground casinos? They've got you covered. But they're not just street-level crooks. These guys are legitimate businessmen, too. Real estate, construction companies, entertainment venues like pro wrestling arenas. You name it, the Yakuza have gotten their greedy paws into plenty of legit operations. They use the mountains of cash from their illegal side hustles to fund these above-ground businesses and extend their reach even further. And let me tell you about their crazy stock market schemes. These guys are straight up financial geniuses when it comes to corporate extortion. They'll dig up some serious dirt on a big company, buy a bunch of shares to become stockholders, and then storm into the boardroom, basically threatening to release the incriminating intel unless the execs pay up and let the Yakuza call the shots. It's a delightfully devious plan, using the corporation's own respectability against them while making sure the Yakuza don't have to directly voice their threats. Just the implication of ruination is enough to make an executive sweat. These guys are diabolical masterminds when it comes to exploiting politeness and avoiding a paper trail. Now we can't talk about the Yakuza without mentioning their long, sordid history of political ties and underhanded power moves. 
These crime clans have had their hands in Japan's political world for decades, pulling strings, greasing palms, and shaping the land of the rising sun to suit their interests. For decades, larger-than-life criminal bosses have played Japan's political elites and legitimate businesses like a symphony orchestra, milking them for funds, collusion, and turning a blind eye to their illicit rackets. When the Yakuza came knocking, you didn't say no unless you wanted to end up swimming with the fishes. Or worse. Now, if you ever run into a full-fledged, dedicated Yakuza member on the street, you'll know it by their massive, sprawling bodysuits of tattoos. We're talking full torso, arm, and back pieces depicting clan insignias, fearsome folklore creatures, and historic scenes of samurai lore. To the Yakuza, these intricate designs etched into their skin are outward badges of their loyalty and commitment to the clan's code, a permanent reminder that they are proudly untouchable, living on the outskirts of respectable society. It's like a full bodysuit of armor made from ink and needles. Of all the symbolic imagery that covers a Yakuza member's tattooed bodysuits, the most significant and meaningful has to be the clan crest. These icons of allegiance are sacred symbols and emblems representing each syndicate's particular crime family. These crests are the crown jewels of a Yakuza soldier's ink. One glimpse is all it takes for seasoned mobsters to recognize exactly which organization, and by extension, which Oyabun boss and extended criminal lineage that tattooed man belongs to. It's a permanent marking of identity, loyalty, and status that carries life or death significance on the streets. No self-respecting Yakuza would be caught without these sacred icons of their sworn family allegiance masterfully inked into their skin. But let me tell you about the most bone-chilling, gut-wrenching Yakuza tradition, Yubitsume. This grisly act is the ultimate demonstration of a Yakuza soldier's fealty to the clan's code. See, if some fresh-faced Koban, that's a low-level young recruit to the family, disrespects his Oyabun father figure boss in any way, simple violence as punishment is considered to be too quick and crass. Discipline in the Yakuza requires a ceremonial act of personal sacrifice and atonement. The unlucky chump who screwed up gets summoned before his raging Oyabun leader, who simply hands him a razor-sharp knife and a basic first aid kit without saying a word. The message is clear. That Coban better suck it up, bite down on a wooden dressing, and prepare to remove the top portion of his own pinky finger as an act of contrition. And that's what he does. Takes a blade to his own flesh and bone, carefully slicing off that precious fingertip joint. The agony is extreme, but showing weakness in the face of it brings even more dishonor. That severed portion is carefully wrapped and presented to the Oyabun as the ultimate show of obedience and apology. But it gets worse. If he messes up again, the Coban may lose another finger joint, then a full finger, and so on down the line until he literally can't grip a sword anymore. It's all about eroding his sense of power and independence. And there you have it, folks. A deep dive into the Yakuza's shadowy world where violence, money, power, and unwavering criminal brotherhood intersect in bizarrely brutal ways. Despite the government finally cracking down in the 90s with anti-racketeering laws, estimates still put Yakuza membership across all clans at a staggering 80,000 strong as recently as the 2000s. So while they may keep a lower profile these days, make no mistake, the tentacles of the Yukiza still strangle many corners of Japanese society.